In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate common palpatory landmarks in the upper extremity that are useful for physical examination. As I'm working through this demonstration, I'm going to be touching a few different areas at the bottom of your neck, across to your shoulder, and down your arm to your wrist and hand. Let me know if anything is uncomfortable, if anything is tender, uh, if you need me to stop or change any of my contacts. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So beginning at the midline, we're going to start with the suprasternal notch. So we're going to find the sternum, move just superior, and find this little indentation here. And then we're going to move laterally until we find the end of the clavicle here. And we can find uh, the junction between the medial end of the clavicle and the manubrium, and that's the sternoclavicular joint. So now allowing our finger to sink within that space, we can feel the joint. If we have trouble finding that joint on our particular patient, we can use our other hand to palpate where we think the joint might be and then we can passively flex and extend the shoulder and then appreciate any motion that we're gonna feel with flexion and extension. So now we can move along that clavicle, feeling the rounded and flattened parts of the clavicle until we drop off the clavicle and we reach this flattened bony landmark that is the acromion, which is the end of the scapula. We can then find the junction between the clavicle and the acromion, which is the acromioclavicular joint. If we're having trouble finding it or if we want to confirm that we're palpating the right place, we can then again grab the arm and flex and extend and we'll feel slight motion at that acromioclavicular joint. From there we can feel the acromion and then move posteriorly along the spine of the scapula. So now the spinal scapula can also be used as an additional uh, landmark contact to help us find the AC joint. We can track back along that spine of the scapula until we reach the clavicle. And in practice, it can be very helpful to use both the clavicle and the spine of the scapula as our primary contacts and then move them together, meet in the middle, and then find the AC joint. So now moving back along the spine of the scapula, we can move and find the medial border of the scapula. So now as we're palpating the different landmarks of the scapula, it can be helpful to take our other hand and brace the humerus and acromion so that the uh, scapula uh, isn't sliding under our fingers. And then at the medial border of the scapula, we can move superiorly, find the superior angle of the scapula, and then we can glide along and kind of tuck our fingers behind the medial border of the scapula until we find the inferior angle of the scapula. And that's a pretty sharp point as well. And then we can use our thumb or our fingers to move under the lateral aspect of the scapula back out to the arm. So now coming back to the chromium, we can find the anterior most part of the scapula, which is the coracoid process. So moving back along the clavicle, we can then drop inferior and find the coracoid as it protrudes uh, forward underneath the clavicle. Uh, if we're having trouble finding it, we can use our other hand to stabilize the scapula and push it forward against our anterior hand. Um, that way we can uh, feel the coracoid under our fingers. Now moving back to the acromion process, we can drop off onto the humerus and then we'll feel the greater tuberosity of the humerus. And then we can move medial and to try to find the uh, lesser tuberosity, but first we're going to find the intertubricular groove where we find uh, the biceps tendon. And if we're having trouble isolating that spot, we can have our patient flex their elbow against us. Go ahead and lift your uh, arm up. Good and relax. And that area can be a little bit tender for our patients. And now we can move a little bit more medial and feel the lesser tuberosity. And then come back out to the greater tuberosity and then palpate down the lateral aspect of the humerus, feeling and following the bony landmarks along the humerus. And then we're gonna feel a little ridge as we move to the distal end of the humerus and we'll find the lateral epicondyle. Now here on the medial aspect, we can also find the medial epicondyle, the humerus. And then on the anterior aspect, we'll find the antecubital fossa that's created by the muscles of the upper arm and lower arm. And then we can move back over to the olecranon process and we can flex and extend the forearm so then we can feel the olecranon sliding within the humerus. And then now we can move back to the lateral epicondyle 
and then we're going to find the radial head. So radial head is going to be a little bit distal and medial to the lateral epicondyle, so we can slide a little distal and a little medial, and we'll feel this little ridge where our next bone starts, where the radius is. And here, if we're unsure, if we're palpating the radial head, we can pronate and supinate the wrist, and we'll feel the radius rolling under our fingers. Also, another way we can find and confirm our contact is we can use one finger in the posterior aspect of that radial head where we think it is. Then we can take our thumb and move into the antecubital fossa, just medial to the brachioradialis muscle. And we can press slowly posterior and then try to pinch the radial head between our fingers. And then from here, we can either slide that radial head posterior and anterior, or we can pronate and supinate the forearm and feel the radial head roll within our fingers. So now here we can follow the radius laterally and follow it all the way to the wrist until we reach the radial styloid. And we can start from the olecranon and follow the ulna posteriorly and feel it as it moves medially until we meet the ulnar styloid. And now we're going to find the carpals starting with the scaphoid. We can have our patient uh, lift their thumb up and the space created by the tendons of the thumb here create the anatomic snuff box. We can take our thumb and press into this space and explore for the scaphoid. And if we can't find it, we can also adduct the wrist slightly and feel the scaphoid as it slides out from the wrist. And then we can pronate the wrist further and from the scaphoid move medially to the lunate. And then from there move further medially to the triquetrium and then supinate the wrist and move anteriorly and try to find the hook of the hamate. The hook of the hamate is also the starting point for the flexor retinaculum. So we can feel the flexor retinaculum as it crosses the base of the hand and it will reach out to the trapezium. And from here, we can move and feel the metacarpals, feel each of the metacarpals and feel them out to the metacarpal phalangeal joints. And when we get to the metacarpal phalangeal joints, we can flex and extend and move in various directions to appreciate the smaller motions, then move out to the phalanges and then into the interphalangeal joints, flex, flex and extend to appreciate the smaller motions. And we can do that with each of the fingers as we move through the hand.